data security is a major thing in our modern world. But how many of us truly understand how to protect and dispose of our information properly? Our next guest, Paul, is going to help us understand that just a little bit better. We need to understand the technological world that we live in, and we need people like Paul to help us figure out these data security issues and fill the void. Let's not waste any time and get into this terrific interview with Paul Katzoff. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now now. Today we have Paul Katzoff with us. He is the CEO of White Canyon Software. Paul, let's start off with letting people know who Paul Katzoff is and how did you become the CEO of White Canyon Software? Uh, Ed, pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be on Dead America. Thank you for having me uh, first off. Um, I've been the CEO of White Canyon Software for three years. As far as my education goes, I have my undergraduate from BYU, Hawaii, and then also my MBA from Utah State. As far as how did I get to this position, um, I think it goes to, A, a lot of work, but also, you know, working for a small company, I had the right educational background, but also I was successful in the sales area the support area, you know, running different teams, things like that. So when the opening came up, they offered it to me. And like anyone else out there, I uh, happily jumped at the chance. Of course. You know, it's unique. You started from the bottom and you kind of went up through the ranks. And that's a great way to learn the details of the company. When you got out of college, I assume you didn't expect just to jump into a CEO role. Right. I, and I think sometimes in the MBA program, you kind of hope that happens to you. And looking back, I think you realize just the amount of information you have to learn post-college. You know, college is great. It gives you a great framework. It gives you a great understanding of business. But when you get into the real world and working day-to-day and how business happens, between different companies, it's a lot to pick up. So yeah, I started off at the bottom. Uh, there was a little bit of humility to take a technical support role, but that was back in uh, 08, February 08, right after the big crash. So I was happy with anything. Uh, took the technical support role, and I decided to actually apply everything I learned in my MBA program 
into that role. And what happened is I was successful. I was organized. I saw the big picture and I got offered the support manager role uh, probably nine months later, a year later and moved into that role. And then once again, I could apply those principles I learned in the MBA program to that position. And it was really fun to kind of see the real world, real world application come into play. To me, that's where the education is so beneficial. And of course, after that, I, I moved into sales and, and on from there. A lot of hard work and dedication for sure. So could you tell us what is White Canyon Software? Yes, so White Canyon Software is a data security company. So we securely erase IT assets. So computers, laptops, desktops, servers, uh, mobile devices, iPads, phones, you name it. Anything with a memory chip on it or a data bearing device, we erase that, that device. And we've been in business for a good 22 years. So in the beginning, it was just, uh, you know, workstations and servers. That was it. Um, but that has really grown into a variety of, of uh, data bearing devices uh, on the CAN side, on the mobile device side, but also on the type of equipment as well. Um, there's SSDs now, NVMe drives. There's a variety of architectures out there that we have to work on. And so as it be has become more complex, luckily the industry has, has grown and, and the demand has increased to kind of to match that issue that's been coming up for a lot of companies out there. It sure has changed since Windows 95, that's for sure. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> yeah. Um, so data security. You know, it's getting noticed a lot more, but yet a lot of us are oblivious to the dangers that are associated with the data that we store on all of our devices. How should we properly dispose of our old devices? Yeah, there's, there's some methods to properly dispose of our devices, but let me talk first to the hubris of it. I think there's a an unfounded confidence that I'm not going to be a target or I'm not going to be affected and, or it doesn't, you know, it's not that important to me. My data, my personal information, uh, the risk is too low. It's not worth the effort. And just so everyone knows out there, there is a large volume of actors trying every day actively to get your data and your personal information. And once they have it, it's not just, you know, an inconvenience with credit card information. Um, it's it's not the, the pain of having to get a new social security number. There's other things out, other actors out there looking to get your health, ins health insurance information so that they can sell it and perform surgeries and other medical procedures under your account. There's uh, mortgage operators out there or actors hoping to kind of intercede in the mortgage area and to gain some profits there so to say it's it's you know what i come up across quite a bit is that you know it doesn't really affect me or they're looking for the rich people or they're going out for the corporation the truth is is we're just at the start of data security and it's going to get worse before we start protecting our information correctly now what you now to speak to what you stated um as far as erasing our data erasing the equipment we have, uh, the best is to erase it with a uh, data erasure tool like our white drive product. There's quite a few out there that will securely erase any device you have, whether it's an old laptop from college <laughs> that you've had for 14 years, which my wife has on our desk, and I keep telling her we need to erase it, and she goes, oh, there's data on there. And I tell her, well, you know, at some point before it leaves this house, we got to erase the data on there. There's Phones, when you turn your phone into T-Mobile, we, we recommend you go and er securely erase that device yourself. You know, there's the peace of mind and the assurance that you've done it correctly, your data is removed, and now you're um, safe from, at least the data is still in that avenue. Okay, so assuming that I'm done with my computer and I want to ensure that the data is erased and I've ran this software that 
many companies out there, not only yours, but many companies provide these wipe softwares. How do you know and verify that your data is fully off of your device? Great question. Great question. Number of different methods. Uh, the basic would be like a sector viewer. So if you got uh, in our program, you can use the sector viewer within it, or you can connect your the the drive to another computer and use a sector viewer tool on that device. And you can go through sector by sector and see if there's zeros or ones or whatever um, override pattern you had on that device. A lot of wipe software tools in the iPad space also have to have a ver verification tool or a VeriDrive tool that we call ours. And that's um, run on about 3% of systems for, for the big refurbishers out there. So what this software program does is it has to be a third party or separate tool from the data erasure program. And it goes through and verifies that that erase was uh, proper, all the data has been removed. So there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, you can even use a data recovery tool if you want to use that. Uh, that's not so exact, but it's also a good way to spot check as well. Okay. So I noticed your software says that it's EAL2 plus certification. What does that mean? Great question. So the EAL2 plus is a certification by common criteria. And what common criteria is, is that's a, a group of countries that kind of came together and they said, hey, you know, we're all certifying the same product. How about we have a set certification process and then anything that's certified between our countries uh, will then become kind of commonly certified between all of us. So Right now, there's 27 countries that take part in this. Uh, the U.S. is one of those. And Common Criteria is one of the five, uh, the EAL2+, plus, sorry, is one of the five levels. And um, it's actually the highest you can get at this point uh, unless Common Criteria changes their um, objectives and their, their setup on their side. Okay, so your software is used throughout our government to ensure that our government facilities are using the proper wipe tools on their hard drives. We hear a lot of controversy within, you know, the Hillary Clinton email scandal and all of this about That's right. was, was her emails properly wiped. So are we secure as a nation using throughout our government, these proper wipe tools? The regulations have been put in place now for each agency. That wasn't the case 10 years ago, 15 years ago. There wasn't a set standard that uh, every device had to be securely erased before it left that agency or before it was reallocated to a, a different federal employee. Uh, that is now the case. Uh, whether it's being correctly implemented in each agency is kind of an unknown. Uh, on our side, we work with the DHS, the, the NSA, the VA, you name it on those three digit acronyms, uh, they use our wipe drive tool for their erasure process. So as far as the data on the federal side, they have kind, they have had to come to um, a, a new stage of data is managed correctly and securely. And we even have the SolarWinds um, data breach or cybersecurity breach recently that, you know, exposes a different avenue, which is, you know, access and who has global access to each computer as well. So, you know, we think about wiping our drives when we get rid of our computer, but a lot of the times we see you've got this detailed layout on your website about deleting temporary internet files. I had no clue what the dangers of these temporary internet files are. Could you talk a little bit about that for us? Yeah, temporary internet files are created by each browser you have. So whether you're using Chrome, Firefox, Edge, even good old Internet Explorer, it will create temporary internet files on your computer, which are kind of caches of information. 
and this the information stored in these internet files is a wide variety. They don't store your credit card information because that's inserted and is a variable you can't be read, but it does keep track of where you've been, how, you know, how long you were at those websites, the content on those websites. It does keep some of your keystrokes as well. There's quite a bit of information these browsers are storing just on your, on your hard drive of your laptop. And it just sits there. And at some point it will get overwritten but in most cases, it'll sit on your computer for years without you having any idea it's there. Yeah. So with that being said, I want to segue into what we are going through right now with this pandemic. We have a lot of people that are working at home. Also, we have a lot of children receiving laptops from our schools. How are we ensuring this data is safe when it's so spread out like that? There's, those are two big, giant issues that are coming up. The work from home movement, first off, we have to applaud our IT managers and IT departments You know, within the U.S. just being able to allow our employees to work from home and then gain access to company networks. Now, in doing that, they may have created a vulnerability where, uh, where employees at home are accessing computer uh, organization networks or their, their company's networks from an unsafe computer or from their home computer or their personal laptop or personal desktop. And possibly, they are downloading company files onto this home computer. The question that comes up is, how is this? personal computer protected? Is there a password on there? Is there antivirus software on there? Is there intrusion detection methods on this laptop or device as well? The other issue that pops up there as well is organizations have spent millions of dollars on their network, millions of dollars of protecting uh, their networks, you know, in their offices. And then all of a sudden, all your employees at home are at home on their home networks. Now, you know, is there a, a uh, password to join these networks? What's the encryption level on these, these networks? Can they get hacked and therefore hack the personal computer the employee is using to access your network and then VPN into your network and gain access? We have moved quickly to get everyone working from home and to keep business going. But at the same time, we've opened a major vulnerability into our corporate networks and hopefully one that we can clean up before it gets exploited. Yeah, because there's a lot of bad players and actors out there that want to exploit anything they can, especially from America. And I notice on your website, which is filled with information for people by the way i love it's packed full there you talk about seven drive retirement security gaps could you touch on that for us a little bit absolutely so on the drive retirement side you know there are a number of different ways companies try and do this right they want to manage their devices they want to you know create a process to manage them but in doing this, there's always, not always, but they have come up with many different little kind of avenues that, that our, our companies, our clients forget. And so these seven security gaps are ones that they need to be aware of. The first one is inadequate reporting, okay? If you're liable for data or if you get stuck with a potential data breach, it's your responsibility as an organization to provide proof that you erase all your IT assets. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Ed, that there's lots of life software programs out there. There are, and there's a lot of free ones. There's a lot of Linux-based ones. You name it, they're out there. But do they provide the reports that prove that your organization has erased their IT assets correctly, their data-bearing devices? Yeah, that's that's interesting. So you also talked about people being fined for allowing 
these data breaches to actually occur by letting their laptop slip out without the data being properly wiped. Absolutely. The, uh, on the HIPAA side, which is the Health Information Privacy Act, this HIPAA law put teeth into letting private health information out or PHI out of your, your organization. And there's actually fines attached to it. And if you go to the Department of HHS and to the Office of Civil Rights, you can actually see the fine amounts. And they, they total somewhere around 50 to $60 million in fines per year that are charged to companies that don't protect PHI or private health information correctly. And so HIPAA has given teeth to the idea that you can't let data out of your organization. And we feel with the California data privacy law and the future federal data privacy law, there's gonna be more teeth out there to protect data, which is a good thing for most consumers or for all consumers we feel. Last season, I talked with Greg Edwards and he has a company crypto stopper and they prevent ransomware attacks well our hospital recently got attacked by one of these ransomware attacks are they going to be fined for that because they got hit with this ransomware attack uh, most likely not uh, ransomware is seeking to encrypt all your data and in order for you to get it back, you have to pay a ransom uh, back to whoever encrypted. And usually it's with Bitcoin or with some uh, payment method that's untrackable. And then you're, supposedly your data will get unlocked. So there's no fine to it because your data hasn't gotten out. The question there is if someone got access to that computer and was able to put ransomware on that device, were they able to then gain access to PHI? And if so, that is a HIPAA violation, and that needs to be reported. And also, you know, you have to discover the depth of that intrusion in that data breach as well. So the software security company that comes in and kind of handles it should be able to understand and recover all of that information. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So they'll be able to do the investigation and see uh, how far the intrusion went, what they had access to. And at that point, if they did have access to PHI, it'd have to be reported to HIPAA or for, to the Office of Civil Rights and go from there. Okay. You know, our world, it sure is changing and it keeps changing at a rapid pace. So what advice do you give to people to make sure that they are following proper procedure to protect their data in the best way. There's a lot of great, I can give a lot of advice. I can give, I don't know, 50 different points here. Number one is recommendation to the typical consumer is if you get an email or if you get a, a phone call or a text, don't click on anything. If it gives you a warning or tells you something, don't click on anything. If you have any questions, look up that company or your bank or whoever it is and go to their website and call a phone number from their website, okay? The phishing attacks and all those that are occurring to normal consumers come because you think something's real. And the best way to avoid that is to go right to the source, contact them on the phone numbers they have on their website and call them. It is very easy to scoop a phone number. So someone could call you with your bank phone number and pretend to be your bank. Uh, it's up to you to protect yourself. And if anyone ever calls you and you have any concern, any inkling of a doubt, just stop. Don't share any fur anything further. Hang up the phone, whatever you need to do, and then call them back on a different line or call them directly with a phone number that you found on their website. Those are the first basic steps is to make sure that you are not clicking anything in, in emails or text messages, anything like that. If you're receiving phone calls, just say, I'll call you back and look up their direct phone line and call them uh, in that way as well. Okay. So how can people hook up with you, Paul, and get more information about what you do and get your services? Yeah, absolutely. Our company's website is whitecanyon.com. Uh, White Canyon Software is 
We are a data security company here in Utah. We've been in the business for 22 years. We've dealt with all sorts of data security issues, so we'd love to talk with you about yours. If you have any questions personally, you can reach me at, uh, on Twitter at Paul Kassoff or also on, uh, on LinkedIn as well. I'd be happy to answer your questions or, or give any advice that you need as well. Uh, this data security area is only going to get worse, unfortunately, and we're here to help you. That's what Dead America is about. You know, people need to step up and help people discuss the problems of the world and i applaud you for helping out making sure people are aware of the technological age the problems that come with it not a lot of people just go out on podcast and make it easier for people to understand and you enjoy your afternoon paul i will thanks ed pleasure to be with you on dead america have a great day Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.